Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Lopes on Movies. I hope you're having a lovely morning. I am joined today by Connor. Hey there, you forgot to say live in New York, Connor. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ed. I didn't Come give on, you your, man. your cool introduction, you know. Yeah, you know you know who I saw on the street today, actually? Who's that? Well, at least I think I did. Ben uh, Stiller? Jeremy, Jeremy Piven. Oh. Jeremy Piven, huh? Remember him? I, saw, I mean, yeah, what was, but... What was the last thing Jeremy Piven's been in? Well, he is now trying to become a stand-up comic. He he was part of the Me Too movement. <laughs> yeah, didn't he get canceled? I thought he got canceled. He he's pretty much canceled. Oh, he he got he, Me Too. Yeah, he did. He, he was he part of the Me Too movement. Oh, yeah. Jeremy. <laughs> I I think it was him at least. He was no, wearing I, yeah, a really yeah, weird that, hat. Yeah, that rings a bell. That rings a bell. Yeah. That sounds like Jeremy Piven. Yeah. 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 I was gonna say poor but, guy, but you know maybe maybe not. <laughs> well, he denied he denied it. So we'll never know. Knows, but yeah. we'll never know. We'll never know the truth behind Jeremy Piven. <laughs> anyway, I'm also joined by Kyle. Hey, how's it going? And today, we are going to do something that we've never done before, which is just kind of talk about what we've been watching lately. Uh, we, yeah. we didn't... We were supposed to see Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark this week, because that's kind of the, I guess, the big movie. And we hinted at it in a previous episode that we were going to talk about it, because Connor went to an advanced screening thing kind of about it but you know we, we I went all... to something where they showed two clips from the movie yeah right right and um, my thought was i was worried about it because it <laughs> seemed like they didn't have a have a finished product mm-hmm. like a month before it was about to open right it's not a good sign so and all they were, and they were yeah whatever go ahead basically uh, all of us you know we looked at the theaters we looked at what we were doing we were like you know i, I don't want to see this movie you know like it so we, we shirked yeah, our we, we yeah. shirked our responsibilities as as the host of a a movie show. Nonetheless, yeah, we have been watching things. So we're just going to talk about the kind of things we've been watching, and you know maybe give you some ideas of stuff that you might be interested in watching. So first things first, let's get out of the way an actual new release movie that Kyle happened to see. So yes. Kyle, please tell us about Hobbs and Shaw. Um. Well, first things first, please you know say the movie title correctly. Oh, I'm so it's- sorry. The Fast, wait, is it The Fast? Wait, now I look like an idiot. It's <laughs> Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't go with the whole, yeah. the whole title. Yeah, now some of you might be wondering, you know, if our standards are too high to see, uh, you know, the scary thing to tell in the dark, why am I seeing Hobbs and Shaw? It's and a that's great because question. Because I, <laughs> well, and we don't have an answer for it. I just happened to see Hobbs and Shaw because, you know, me and friend of the show, Chris loved to see bad movies. So, so anyway, is, is, was it Chris bad? is a friend of the show. Who is he? Who is he? I don't know. Yeah, he hasn't just, been he's on, a friend so I guess he's just he's a, a friend. friend. He's a friend of the show. He no. hasn't been on the show, but he's a friend of the show. No, he's he's a mysterious presence. Anyway, tell me what is this about? I mean, I guess I have an I to, sort of an idea. Okay, so Hobbs and Shaw is the story about Hobbs and Shaw, two of the greatest <laughs> characters in the Fast and Furious franchise. <laughs> Of which I have not seen any, so I'm an awful judge for any of this. I was going to ask that, because I haven't yeah. seen any of that series either, and it's been going on for, like, two decades at this point. Yeah. So it, like, it like, took that, like, brief hiatus, and now it's back yeah, to, like, a yearly release. You can't release get rid of this like franchise. That. It just keeps no. on, keeps trucking along. No. Is this, like, the ninth one of these, or is this, like, uh, Actually, I, I looked it up before. Yes, this is the ninth uh, Fast and Furious Good God. associated movie. So, uh, yeah. And there's still one coming out next year and the year after that, so they're not stopping anytime soon. Hobbs and Shaw is a spinoff or like a side story mm-hmm. in the franchise. Mm-hmm. You know, talking about everyone's favorite characters, Hobbs and Shaw. I don't remember their first names. Which one is and Jason Statham? I believe he's Shaw. <laughs> you saw the movie and you, you don't know it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember. They, I feel like they say both their names a lot, so. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like, ah, oh, come on, Shaw, but then they both move, so it's kind of difficult to really Kyle, figure out. Kyle, you're doing out. a great job, by the way. I have no idea what this is about. <laughs> right, come on, it's not that tough. It's, it's an action movie. So, so my... Hobbs and Shaw got to team up to fight the evil Idris Elba. My understanding uh, is that, that Jason Mac Statham was like a really, really big bad guy in one of the other movies. And I think like... The Rock was a bad guy in one of the movies, too. No, but... there's no way. Was he? Because I, I think... Once again, I've never seen a Fast and Furious movie. All I've seen are the trailers. What I th- I think like Hobbs and or Shaw, whoever the Rock is, was like a FBI guy. But then 
you know, hunting down the evil Fast and Furious crew, but then the Fast and Furious crew became good guys. So then, oh, they want they want them over, and yeah, okay. then like the Rock is like, I'll help you guys defeat a terrorist or something. Sure, sure, sure. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So anyway, um, what are we talking about again? Oh yeah, Hobbs and Shaw. So, Fast and uh, Furious Hobbs and presents Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw is a very very dumb movie. Like, it's ridiculous how dumb of a movie this is. But I sort of liked it because it was so dumb. By all means, <laughs> I'm not telling you to go out and see this movie. But I, there was definitely some parts of it that I found enjoyable. Uh, like, it's such a cliched action movie. Mm-hmm. And the entire movie has so many scenes where it's like, you know, maybe if we just work together, we could figure this out. Of course. Of and course. I think, I mean, spoiler alert, I guess. Like, I'm pretty sure there's actually a line when they're fighting Idris Elba, who's the bad guy, where they're like, uh, if we fight him by ourselves, we can't beat him. Maybe if we teamed up, we could do it. Oh and, my you know, God. they team up and they beat him. Spoiler alert. Oh, no. That, yeah. Oh. And yeah, uh, let's see, what mm-hmm. else? Gosh, I don't even know what, how to talk about this movie because it's just dumb scene after dumb scene. Probably the best scene in the movie that if Chris, friend of the show Chris was here, he'd agree, is in like the last big car chase, The Rock and Jason Statham are driving a pickup truck that's attached to a helicopter mm-hmm. that they're driving across a cliff. Mm-hmm. And so the, the last part of this movie takes place in Hawaii. The Rock is finding his roots, all mm-hmm. that stuff. And... Three different times, The Rock says something along the lines of, Help me, brother! And one of his brother comes on a car, attaches it to the first car. And then that guy says, Help me, brother! And a car comes, attaches it to the second car. And then the third guy says, Help me, brother! And the fourth guy comes and attaches it to the car. At one point, there's, a, like, five cars attached to each other, hanging off of a cliff. Oh my god, it's just so... I can't even describe it well. You should just go see the movie and see it yourself. <laughs> this sounds um, exceptionally dumb. It's it it's awful, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't find it enjoyable. I will say I have I just had one crazy thought that this reminded me of. Do you guys remember? It must have been a decade ago at this point that they did a reboot of the A Team. Yes. Do you remember yes. that? Where, <laughs> I, where I saw that in theater. Bradley Cooper was in it, and I don't remember anybody else that was in it. But I remember there was a scene. Where like they're falling out of the sky with a tank and they're like mm-hmm. yes. shooting shooting shots from the tank to make the tank fly, and like one one character who's on like some FBI guy in like a control room is like, they're gonna fly that tank, <laughs> and I, I'm I, I'm just wow this is a very dumb movie, um you know this, I, uh, this is what it, that's what this you're, you you talking about Hobbs and Shaw reminded me <laughs> of of this, I'll put it this way if you liked. The you know whatever it is 2011 A team you'll probably like Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> All right, They're very so similarly stupid movies. I'm sure you, th- that's definitely a massive yeah. a massive uh, part of our audience. All right, let's move on from Hobbs and Shaw. Connor, what have you been watching lately? Okay, well I actually haven't seen this uh, recently, but I saw a movie called Loose, which just got its release in new york and probably some other places i think it might get a like a bigger release soon i don't Mm -hmm. know if it's in delaware yet but it might be eventually eventually so i saw right i saw this in an advanced screening uh, a few months ago it stars naomi watts octavia spencer and tim roth and also kelvin harrison jr who you might know from the movie It Comes at Night, where the movie where nothing came at night, but it was actually a really good oh, movie. Yeah. Oh, I remember yeah. that guy. Okay. He, yeah, he was the lead uh, kid. He, played, he was the son in, uh, in that one. Okay. Okay, so Loose. This one is about a married couple who the married couple is Naomi Watts and Tim Roth. So it was a little Twin Peaks The Return reunion, sort nice. of, or two Twin Peaks characters, which, you know, nice. it's always nice to see. So that that was you know a, a big thing for me. So it, this couple adopts a a child from like a war torn African country, who uh, is in you know grew up as part of like the like child soldier army. So with, uh, yeah. you know sure. yeah. So he was adopted probably when he was I think when he was a young kid. So maybe when he was like in his early teens or something like that. Mm-hmm. 
so they adopt him. He becomes a like tremendous student. He's a great athlete also, and uh, he's like the 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 star student in the school. And then, you know, everything seems to be going well until his one teacher, played by Octavia Spencer, kind of discovers some interesting things about him through uh, kind of some shady means of on her own that uh, she found of his. So, so kind of kind of like Ma is what you're saying. <laughs> well, kind say kind of like Ma. So I, I have to, I, and I have more to say about that actually. <laughs> so. Right. So basically, she suspects Luce to be up to no good and actually may even be a dangerous person. And it has to, so a lot of the film is obviously about is this kid just kind of acting like a good person and going through the motions? Mm -hmm. or, or is he actually deep down still like a, you know, a, a, a killer or, or whatever yeah, sure, he, sure. he, he mm -hmm. was when he was back in, uh, you know, his original, you know, his country, like when he, where he was born? Uh, so it was an interesting movie. I think it was a, like, I, I don't know. It's getting really good reviews right now from critics. I don't know if it's going to latch on. It's obviously a movie about, you know, it's, there's kind of like a nature versus nurture debate mm -hmm. kind of thing going on in there, but like, and how do you, you know, get this out of uh, somebody? There's a lot of mis there's a misdirect in here kind of thing. So it leads you to think one way and, and it feels like something that's building to a twist mm -hmm. and uh so octavia spencer is in it and i actually in the the panel that i was on also for after the the film i thought that octavia spencer was good a lot of other people did not because it's mm. a very different role for her hmm. so i was i actually thought this was the best thing i ever saw octavia spencer in because it, it just wow. felt like a different thing wow. for her like where she's not playing the uh she always she plays like the good trustworthy friend or or yeah, like right. mentor person well yeah, and sure. in this one she's more the aggressor and looking to find this looking to find what this kid is doing wrong mm -hmm. and and uh, mm -hmm. so I thought that was interesting that she's taking on like a different role like that and just like she did with like Ma it. yeah and then I then I saw Ma and then that's the greatest thing that she's ever done is <laughs> so, uh, Octavia Spencer has got range that's one, that's that's the best that's the best thing that. Uh, that came out of uh, loose for me, but I thought that uh, Kelvin Harrison Jr., who played the lead, was a bit flat. But uh, that could have been the way the character was. He's not mm -hmm. someone who shows a ton of emotion mm -hmm. in the film. Uh, Tim Roth and Naomi Watts—they're always great mm -hmm. in everything. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, you know I guess it's a, a thriller drama type type movie. You know, don't judge a book by its cover, maybe, or maybe if you do, you know. Uh, you you'll leave the the film kind of with with questions as it sounds to uh, pretty provocative. if you like it or not. Yeah, it, it is provocative. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, I don't want to. The more you, you can't really talk too much about it without revealing like the you know the 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 most interesting part about it, which sure, is the yeah. where it's going, the yeah. misdirector or what uh, what's actually going on. So. Well, you've piqued my interest. Yep. So if, yeah, if, it's if actually I the, it, uh, if I get the opportunity can, to see it, I think I might. What uh, I Right. What I can tell you is that it's a real, it's a real movie. Hey, Did I love it? That's no. Good. That's all I'm looking it. for these days, man. Just, just right. show me a real movie, yeah. and I'm, I'm there. Did I love it? No, but it's, uh, it's a movie to say the least. Yeah, Jerry, right. what, did, what did you see? You saw something. Right? Yeah, so I've, I've been watching a couple of movies at home uh, lately. Uh, one of my coworkers, Alex Keen, lent me a Blu-ray copy of the movie Bronson, which, if you guys are not aware, Bronson. I don't know if it's one of his first movies, but it's definitely an earlier Nicholas Winding Refn movie before Drive. Ooh. I'm pretty sure this predates Drive. Um, and the basic premise of Bronson is it's it's a biopic, my least favorite genre of film. <laughs> um, it's a biopic about somebody who is considered England's most notorious criminal. Or notorious prisoner, rather, would be a better way of putting it, because he was known for his insanely violent outbursts in prison. So he would just, like, unprovoked beat people up and do crazy things. Um, so th this is a biopic about this character whose real name is not Charles Bronson, but it's a name he decides to adopt as, like, a fighter, like, alter ego, basically. Um, based on the actor, of course, Charles Bronson, who is in my favorite movie, Once Upon a Time in the West, which you all should watch. Um, yes. Anyway, Bronson is a very, very strange movie. And I think 
all wait bio- from Nick, Nick, Nicholas Wend- Wending Refn made a strange movie. I know it's a <laughs> shocker. It's a shocker. But the thing that's funny about it is that structurally it feels very much like your standard run of the mill biopic in that it's just sort of presenting moments in this character's life throughout his kind of journey. So there's not really much story there's no like real i mean you could argue there's a beginning middle and end but it doesn't really build to anything in particular it's just kind of like here's this character and here's kind of the stuff that he did and what he does so it's very similar to other biopics in that sense where there's there's not really much of a story there and usually that's the kind of thing that i really despise like we we talk about bleed for this we talk about chuck uh, you know these these movies that nobody even knows what they are like, but but I have to bring them up because we saw them. Everyone and loves Bleed for this. They they just mean nothing to me. You know, they're, they're these <laughs> nothing movies that that just kind of evaporate from your memory after you see them. Which is no fault of the filmmakers. It's just that they're making a biopic, and that's just sort of you, you're hamstrung by that structure, mm-hmm. sort of. But Nicholas Winding Refn, of course, is not a you know boring filmmaker. He's going to do what he can to to elevate. The material in whatever way he can and this is a very stylish and strange movie um you could say that some of that is due to the lead performance which is of course the america's sweetheart tom hardy um and i think tom hardy in this is going to be controversial Uh-oh. i think tom hardy is the modern day nicholas cage Okay, go on, please. And the 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 reason I say that is because Tom Hardy is a deeply strange performer, and his performances and everything he does are always okay, very. I think I understand what you mean. Strange, right? Now, his yeah. instincts, his instincts are kind of weird, right? Right, exactly. Like, like, when like he Nicolas emphasizes Cage, certain points, yeah, like yeah. Nicolas Cage feels the same to me. Where it's like you see a Nicolas Cage movie and you're like, okay, this this guy, there's nobody quite like this guy. Right. Yeah. And sometimes his performances like border on caricature or, or almost are hard to believe because they're so strange. But because I think Tom Hardy is just so talented in the way he's able to be so honest in his performances that even though it comes off like almost so ridiculous, it's hard to believe. He has so much conviction in what he's doing and so much like confidence that it just you're like, okay, this is the character. This is just how he is, I guess. Um and yeah, so it, it's a very uh, it's kind of weird because it's obviously about this guy who is incredibly violent but he's kind of jovial and quirky and you you really kind of like him even though like there's an attempted murder at one point you know he's he's he's, he's not exactly a great guy but right. it's hard not to find him really endearing partially because of tom hardy's performance but it's just a very interesting character um and even, despite the fact that there's not much story for that character it's just kind of here's what happened at this point in his life here's what happened at this point in his life here's i mean the climax of the movie is definitely the weirdest scene but in terms of like escalation it doesn't so much feel like it's the climax of a story as much as it is just the weirdest thing that he did you know um but nonetheless it's a very interesting and well well well-made piece of work and it, it feels like despite being kind of it's still a struct- structurally very much a biopic. It feels like a Nicholas Winding Refn movie. Like it has some of his, you know, hallmarks. You know, things like the synth wave '80s kind of music is in there. And it, it that almost I, that I like. It's almost weird because there's like this is a movie about like a guy who is a prisoner in like the '70s and you know in in mm-hmm. England. But I, I guess I guess it works. As he, at one point, <laughs> it does actually go into the '80s. But it's just something about the the setting and the and that kind of married to this like you know driving like synth bass you know you're like this yeah this is not what i expected but can I'm i ask it. a couple questions sure by all means okay so you know and i don't know if you know the answer or not uh did he write this um i do not believe he did but let me double check that actually because that's an interesting question my understanding of bronson is that it's one of the only like Nicholas Winding, it was one of his, his early movies, so it was before he was like, you know, an auteur who could do whatever he wanted, which is right, kind of right. what he is now. Um, yeah. Well, right now I know he has a new 
like ser- TV series. Yeah, he does. He, he does. Yeah. yeah. So he he the I think it's called like Too Old to Die Young or something. Yeah. Like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very. Really Miles Teller's in it. Yeah. So he he co-wrote this, but I don't believe it was originally his script. He might have added things to it after uh, after he got signed on to the project. But yeah, this is kind of like it's it's a good example of a an auteur director's like one of his early movies where he's not in complete control but is still enacting enough control for it to feel like their own movie because nowadays right. it feels like nicholas winding refn is like you you could argue that he's maybe gone a bit too far and a <laughs> lot of people did not like only god forgives i think uh i didn't oh, see yeah, only god that. forgives it, the neon demon like, is a little bit i did like the neon demon some people are a little bit like divisive on that one i know I, I haven't seen it um and drive was another example of sort of like an early movie where it was it's still like very much a genre film you know it doesn't feel like it's it, it kind of fits into a genre but it's still very unique and well done in you know director style but yeah i i would recommend that people check out bronson if you uh are just looking for something weird to watch if nothing else yeah. it's it's a fantastic performance by tom hardy it's the kind of thing that you're you're not easily going to forget you piqued my interest connor what else have you been watching lately? Okay, all right. So there's this show on Netflix, of all things. I know we're we're big Netflix people, right? Yeah, I don't have Netflix, unfortunately. Yes. Well, not okay, unfortunately. So that, okay, I it's a it's a TV series. It's a German TV series or German. Uh, you know, let's uh, let's just get this right. It's a German show. You mean to tell me we're going to be talking about a TV series on a movie show? What kind yes, of, we are. What kind of garbage very, is this? That doesn't, that doesn't sound right. Let me tell you, it's a, it's very cinematic, and it's it it's uh, it fits. Okay. 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 Let me get it. Let me get into it. I think uh, you'll be intrigued. Okay. So it's called Dark. It's current. It has two seasons so far. I've mean, I've only been watching a bit of the first season. Mm-hmm. It's by a guy who I hope I'm saying his name right. Baron Bo Odar, I think, is how you say his That's name. A good name. It's a great uh, okay. So, it's a TV series that I can best describe, and it's all in German, of course, it would, uh, so you have to read the subtitles. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of reading. I think it's that's basically fine. a combination of Twin Peaks meets Stranger Things. Interesting. In, and it's like the, the Stranger Things that I would want to actually watch. So this is, it's, it's very slow and methodical. There's a ton of characters, and let me just explain the premise. So it's, and this is from IMDb, and I'll, I'll elaborate a little more. A family saga with a supernatural twist set in a German town where the disappearance of two young children exposes the relationships among four families. So, like Twin Peaks, which is about the, you know, Laura Palmer who gets uh, murdered, and then it's mm-hmm. a mystery around that. In this one, it's two young children who are just missing and how the town kind of reacts to this happening all the characters are interconnected which is really interesting Mm -hmm. you see the relationships between all of them and it's so well shot too now it's it's very slow and the pacing is kind of something that would not be for everyone there's not a ton of like you know crazy action sequences by at all Mm -hmm. but it's it's a surrealist kind of kind of thing and if you're into that sort of uh genre it's a it's something that uh you'll really like i think it's probably one of the better shows on netflix and i don't know how many people know about it yeah that's interesting i wonder like has this been like advertised at all because obviously i've never heard about it like how did you find out about it i found out about it from my roommate who just said you know this you know we gotta watch the show dark and normally i just kind of uh wave him off because he'll he'll try to get me to watch shows like the boys or which oh, is the yeah, amazon yeah, yeah. one about the super which i don't care about that yeah right, I'm, right. I, I get you it's another one of these like man of steel kind of be superman is evil kind of thing gotcha mm-hmm. or you know the watchman gotcha yeah right, right, good. right. it's just more extreme all right sure. okay but this this one piqued my interest just from like uh the interconnected characters the surrealist element and then you know it's give the first episode a shot and immediately i was thinking twin peaks mixed with uh stranger things also and the other reason why i'm thinking stranger things is because there's an 80s vibe to it also Mm -hmm. you there's the uh not as much the score but there's a lot of references to like 80s music Mm -hmm. genre and i'm not going to go into uh the exact themes of the show i've and i have i couldn't even go into all the way because i haven't i've only seen maybe five episodes so far Mm -hmm. 
the one thing that I would say is different from Twin Peaks in that Twin Peaks, the storyline is is uh, the Laura Palmer, who's the the young like uh, girl who gets gets killed, and it's all about the mysteries around like that her murder mm-hmm. that were was what the show was supposed to originally be conceived as mm-hmm. when uh, David Lynch and Mark Frost wanted to make it. It was about the uh, what else was happening, and and the the original murder was never supposed to be solved. But the network demanded it, and that's what kind of you know destroyed the show until right. it got renewed like right. miraculously recently uh, a couple of years ago. This show clearly has like an end game. You can tell that they're building towards something that the characters like they're they're setting up things. So this one does definitely will have like a more conclusive narrative story is what I can at least tell from what I'm watching right, right now. It's it's not like the way Twin Peaks was intended. So are we talking about like a one season and out type of deal? I think, well, it's multiple seasons now. It's already gone two. Okay. So I think it's going to get, and I think it's getting another season two. I think it's getting a season three this year, or maybe it came, I don't know if it came out Mm -hmm. this year yet. Yeah, actually, season three is for 2020, but it it has more of of, a straight story than, uh, than Twin Peaks, but... If, if you're into that kind of surrealist television and you are okay with reading German subtitles, if you don't speak German already, then uh, I think this is something that's worth checking out. It's called Dark. Well, already then. It sure sounds a lot better than, uh, I don't know, what, what's another, like, Netflix show? Uh, 13 House Reasons on the Why. Hill? Ha- House on the Hill. Um, the funny thing the is hun- Netflix no, releases you mean so the many hunting sh- of Hill House? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Netflix <laughs> releases so many shows and then cancels them after like one season. It's like ugh, I, I I don't even know like what what is a Netflix show anymore. It's not going to matter though when Disney Plus comes out, Netflix will go out of business. Well, it's dark. <laughs> Well, I think that's all the time we have today, guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining us for this incredible episode. Um, I hope that some of the stuff that we've talked about has piqued your interest. I'd say definitely, you know, there's there's, there's a couple of things from this conversation that I'd say I'm interested in uh, in checking out. Yeah, I think we all want to see Fast and Furious uh, present. Oh, yeah, definitely. uh, Roy Rogers and... uh, and, and, uh, and Hobbs. Roy Rogers. Yeah. Hobbs and Hobbs and Roy Rogers. <laughs> what is this? What is it? What is it called again? Hobbs uh, and Shaw. Oh, but where did I get Roy Rogers from? <laughs> That's a great. That's question. an excellent question. <laughs> we don't know which one is the Rock and which one is Jason Statham, but we know that they're a, a, mitch, a mismatched pair that uh, <laughs> you know get into some hijinks. They're the new odd couple. They're the new odd couple. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you next week, everybody. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> <laughs>